Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Legal Attempt with me, George Tintankwa Malipilo, and we are back! Yes, I know you missed my lovely voice running through your ears, telling you about the landmark judgments from the most powerful appeal court in our country, the Supreme Court of Zambia, ladies and gentlemen. So we are back, and I promise you this time we're not going anywhere. Well, we had to go on a break for a few months. I had another podcast called A Problem at 10, a Zambian constitutional podcast on an anchor platform. You should check it out though. But for now, we're back and fully focused. So when we get back, we'll be looking at today's landmark judgment. For now, listen to Ben Sound going higher. All right, welcome back, welcome back. So today's landmark judgment streams from the international law dispute case of Zambia Sugar PLC. Did I say international law dispute case? Or let's just say the Supreme Court landmark judgment of Zambia Sugar PLC v. Felia Nanzaluka. Now, before this became Zambia Sugar PLC v. Felia Nanzaluka, it was Felia Nanzaluka versus Zambia Sugar PLC. This was an employment matter, so it was in the Industrial Relations Court at the time. I don't have to start explaining why you have the International, I mean the Industrial Relations Division. And we no longer have the industrial relations court. Okay? So, now, in the industrial relations court, industrial relations court dealt with or still deals with, despite the name change, all employment matters. Now, this issue arose because Zambia Sugar PLC had terminated the contract for service, if I'm correct, of Mr. Felia Nanzaluka. He was employed with the company in 1992, but his termination without notice was given to him in 1996. And of course, he was paid three months salary in lieu of notice. So meaning, rather than giving you notice you were fired, they gave him three months salary. I think we've talked about this case in James Matala and uh, uh, the Zambia Privatization Agency. Now, he brought an action in the Industrial Relations Court soon after. Okay. Now, the court accepted that the conditions of service had been complied with. But... Very important that you should note this. But the action was done contrary to the International Labor Convention number 158 of 1982, which clearly forbids termination of a contract of employment without giving a valid reason. So this was the Industrial Relations Court's judgment and rationale. Now, when we come back, we'll be looking at the matter before the Supreme Court of Zambia and what they had to say. Now, today's case of course, looks at an international convention. Do the judges have the right to cite a case which is not yet domesticated as an act of parliament? Or is an international convention applicable in our country upon ratification and signing? So that will be answered later, but when we come back, we'll hear the Supreme Court of Zambia ruling or their rationale. For now, some Going Higher by Ben Sound. We, so welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So the matter went before the Supreme Court of Zambia as an appeal. So it was Zambia Sugar PLC versus Felia Nanzaluka, appeal number 82 of 2001. The Supreme Court held that international agreements on any law, although ratified and assented to by the state, cannot be applied unless they have been domesticated that was the first portion so meaning any international agreement in order for it to be applicable and in order for our judges to use it that particular international convention must not exist on its own it must be linked to an act of parliament so let us say the political civil the international convention on political uh No, the International Convention on Political and Civil Rights. Freedom of expression, freedom of opinion, freedom of religion. Those are attached to the Constitution. They have been domesticated. They are applicable in Zambia. Our human rights, the guarantee of human rights under Part 3. Those can be used. The Convention on Discrimination Against Women. Is it CIDO? 
uh, yeah, the Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, the Gender Equity and Equality Act. Those are attached. Here, the International Labour Convention that was being used by the judge was not applicable because at the time, the Employment Act, which is now an act that was repealed by the Employment Act number 3 of 2019. So the Employment Act at the time was chapter 20. No, not chapter 20. Chapter 268 of the Laws of Zambia, the Employment Act. Now, when you go, when you go through the act under section... Is it, have I missed it? Termination? Yeah, I think I've missed it just a bit. Where is it? I did, I did see it. I did read it. Okay, let me just... Under section 36. So 36 related to how a contract would be terminated. Okay. Termination of contract. And you do not provide for the issue of giving notice. Now, the International Labor Convention that the Industrial Relations Court at the time cited said this convention does provide that termination of an employment of contract. There must be a valid reason, so you must give it. So they said... Zambia Sugar contravened that. However, the court said, even though it has been signed, as long as that international convention has not been domesticated, meaning there is no act of parliament supporting that particular provision, it is not applicable and you cannot use it. Therefore, in our country, this provision only became or was domesticated in 2015. When the Employment Act was amended and the Employment Act number 15 of 2015 was created. Now, Section 5 of that Employment Amendment, or Clause 5, stated that Section 36 of the Principal Act, which is the Employment Act, is amended. And they inserted the fact that the employer shall give reasons to the employee for the termination of that, of that employer's employment. What this now shows is how... The International Labour Convention was domesticated into Zambian law when it comes to the termination of an employee's contract of employment. So therefore, you've also learned another issue here to say whenever you are terminating an employer's, employees, whenever you're terminating an employee's contract, you have to give them a valid reason why. But not taking away from what you've learned, this landmark judgment put to rest the fact that international agreements are actually toothless if they're not domesticated by our National Assembly and uh, ratified and signed by Parliament. Oh, yeah. Let's just say by Parliament. If the Act is not enacted, if there's no Act of Parliament, then they are toothless. Because even if they are domesticated... No, even, even if... Uh, no, what am I saying? They have to be domesticated. So if they are not domesticated, even if it is ratified and assented to by the state, our courts cannot apply those provisions. They will only be used as persuasive value. They will not be binding because they are not domesticated. Only domesticated international agreements can be applicable to Zambia, which I find to be, ah, you know, because, I mean, they have been ratified and signed. We need to start accepting that these are part of us. The government has agreed. They've signed the contract. But anyway, I'm not a judge of the Supreme Court. I don't make uh, laws that are binding on all other courts. But the whole instance of the case of Zambia Sugar PLC versus Felia Nanzaluka was to give you the aspect that once our state signs an international agreement, it is not automatic that it will become law. No. It only becomes part of our law when... It is actually transformed, domestic, transformed from international law, and it is converted and domesticated into an act of parliament. This is why, even if we say international law is a source of law, it is not a law of Zambia, because the law of Zambia is provided for, or the laws of Zambia are provided for under section, no, Article 7 of the Constitution of Zambia Amendment Number 2 of 2016, and it says, the laws of Zambia constitute of this constitution, laws enacted by parliament, statutory instruments, Zambian customary law, which is constant with this constitution, and laws and statutes which, are, which apply 
or extend to Zambia as prescribed. So these are English extent of extension and uh, the British acts. These are laws that apply to Zambia up to a certain period. So you've seen, they haven't mentioned international law. International law comes in where? When we domesticate it. Meaning, these are the laws of Zambia that are applicable. So an international agreement signed by our country will not automatically be law. You have to wait until there is a principle of domestication. So this also brings into light to say the landmark judgment put to bed the rest and said Zambia is a dualist state. International agreements and our municipal law exist separately. And if we want an international convention to be part of our laws, it must be domesticated. And that an international convention will only become part of our laws if it is signed and assented to by the state, then domesticated. So if any of these are not done, that international agreement cannot be considered to be part of our laws and cannot be applicable. So thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode, looking at the landmark judgment of Zambia Sugar PLC and Felian Anzaluka as to when international agreements are applicable in Zambia and when judges or even lawyers or even people in court can use these agreements and they're applicable. Remember, if they're not domesticated, these international instruments are not applicable and they can only be used for persuasive value. The case of the Attorney General and uh, Roy Clark is another, another case that talks about is of similarity. It also sheds more light on this, but we're looking at Felia and Zaluka and Zambia Sugar, so I don't want to diverge. We'll tackle that later on. So, like I have said, international agreements are only applicable in Zambia upon domestication. So, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I am sorry that I've been away for such a very long time, but we are back and we will be releasing episodes frequently. But we do have another podcast, A Problem at 10, Zambian Constitutional Podcast on another platform called Anchor. It's way much better. I have more time to speak to you. I did think about um, also switching the Untitled Legal Attempt to Anchor, but I think I will I'll stick, with, I'll stick with this one here. I'll just be here. But thank you very much. Um, I actually have 116 downloads because of you people. So let's keep on pushing. Send the message out. We're just trying to have a good time. Listen to a few cases. Educate one another. So until next time, when we look at a criminal case that is bordering on witchcraft, I've been your host, George St. Tamkwamale Fellow, and we're out! <laughs>